Shout it loud, hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet, please. As we close our eyes, we'll sing this song loud and clear. That wonderful name, Jesus. That wonderful name, Jesus. That wonderful name, Jesus. There is no other name I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's wonderful name. Jesus. Hallelujah. That's wonderful name. Jesus. There is no all the name I know. Right there where you are tonight, I'd like you to pick any song of praises in your mouth and sing it loud and clear to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Any song of praises. Thank you, Jesus. Sing it loud and clear. Jesus is here. And his power is able to deliver to the uttermost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna in the high. Lord, we lift up your name. Lord, we lift up. Lord, we lift up your name. With a heart full of praise, we are God. Your hand, your hand, your hand, your hand. Oh, glory, oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory to the King of kings. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory to the King of Lord, we lift up your name. Lord, we lift up your name. Lord, we lift up your name. In the heart full of praise. Full of praise. We shall tell the Lord our God. Your hand. John, 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 John. He is the King of Kings. He is the, he is the Lord of Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. 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 Where he has you have. He is the, he is the King. He is the King of Kings. Of kings, he is the, he is the Lord. Hallelujah, is the name. Jesus, 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 he has you. Your hand, your hand. He is the, the Lord in it, the Lord in it. Blessed be the name of the Lord, of the Lord, of the Lord our God. Oh, mini potent, he reigns. Shout it loud and clear, the Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, for the Lord God. Oh, mini potent, he reigns in my head. The Lord reigns. Be the name of the Lord. He will answer my at the mention of that name. Every knee shall bow at the mention of that name. 
every tongue confess of the mention of the name. The mention of the name, every knee, every knee shall bow. The mention of the name, every tongue. You are king. You are king of kings. You are Lord. You are Lord of Lords. At the mention of that name, every knee shall bow. At the mention of that name, every song of can you shout this louder than anyone around you? Powers rising up against my healing. Receive the blow of death in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and cry unto the Lord. Powers rising up against my healing. Command them to receive the blow of death in the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray every deposit of darkness in my body can you shout that loud catch fire in the name of Jesus open your mouth and declare it thank you Jesus in Jesus name we pray Father, we thank you for a time like this. And we thank you for this new series of studies you have brought before us. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Tonight, especially open the understanding of your children. Tonight, let every battle waged against our wholeness be destroyed. Tonight, Lay your hands upon our body, soul, and spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. This evening, by the grace of God, we're starting a new series of studies called Total Healing. I'm sure you have your outline in your hand of total healing my prayer which I pray from the bottom of my heart is that if there is anyone here tonight who is sick in any part of the body, soul and spirit the Lord will heal you completely in the name of Jesus total healing if you open your Bible to third John that is the John before revelation third John It has only one chapter. Look at the verse 2. If you are there, say yes. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Now, if we go to First Thessalonians, which is our text in that place, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God, your own spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. These are two heavy passages which need deep thinking, deep meditation. They are all telling us that man is not just body man is made of more than just this physical body you are seeing. He's telling us that there can be partial healing. Total healing. 
total healing is when your body, your soul, and your spirit are prospering. If you prosper in one aspect and the others are in trouble, we cannot call it total healing. And very soon as you go on in these total healing teachings, you begin to know that it is the spiritual sickness that starts first before this physical illness gets in. I am praying for somebody here tonight. Every spiritual sickness troubling your life shall be buried by fire. Nature, amen, rule like fire. Look at the introduction of that outline. In God's master plan, there are provisions for man's spiritual, physical, and emotional health. Man was created in God's image and empowered to exercise dominion over sin, sickness, and demons. Dominion over sin, sickness, and demons. The Greek word sozo means salvation and wholeness. It is used to convey God's offer of total salvation for the total man. The words salvation, health, and wholeness are used interchangeably in scripture. This was convey God's plan for total restoration of the old person, including his spirit, his body, his will, his imagination, and his relationships. God's plan of salvation centers on restoring human life to wholeness that we may be truly be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among brethren God's concern for the old man is to heal and preserve the spirit, the soul and the body now the mystery of total healing man is a spirit being who lives in a body and has a soul so meaning that man is three in one man is a spirit living in a body and having a soul so the real you is not this body looking at us the real you is that spirit being inside of you when that spirit leaves the body the bible said the body without the spirit is dead when that spirit leaves the body that's when they say the person is dead but as far as the body is still there and the spirit is there the person remains alive so the real you is the spirit being salvation is targeted at that real you inside once that real you is born again is pressed to the outside the same thing if that inner man is sick that spirit man is in trouble the trouble will spread to the soul it will spread to the body Many times when you see somebody who has fallen away from the faith and you wonder how, how what happened, what happened, what happened? The person has already backslidden inside before that outside one. I'm praying for somebody here. Every arrow fired against your spirit man to demote the spirit man and make the spirit man weak. May those arrows backfire now. In the name of Jesus. Say, my spirit man! Let your voice roar like thunder. Catch fire. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and send fire upon our spirit man. Say my spirit man. Catch the fire. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Man is a spirit. He lives in a body. That body is like a container. But he has a soul. If those three parts are not whole, the person does not have total healing. These three parts of man have been provided for in God's redemptive plan. God created man whole. Man was in a perfect state in that garden of Eden until sin led to total disintegration. Jesus now came to effect the removal of sin, sickness, emotional pain, and spiritual bondage. So when Jesus declared upon the cross, it is finished, it canceled all kinds of problems or affliction. On that cross, Jesus paid for our redemption, shared his blood to make our deliverance and healing possible. 
That's why we say by his stripes we are healed. He allowed his body to be lacerated by cruel stripes in order to perfect our healing. He became wounded in order to wipe off our emotional pain and trauma. He fulfilled the entire provision of the law to erase any satanic legal and writing working against our destiny. Our outline said, hold the joy of salvation. Because through the blood of Christ, we can now experience and enjoy salvation of the soul. We can experience bodily healing, deliverance of the spirit, and total preservation of the body, the soul and the spirit, as well as being made ready for the coming of the Lord. Herein lies the mystery. God offers salvation for the total man. The gospel is God's power to save to the uttermost. So the Bible presents salvation for the whole man. And real salvation centers on wholeness for the whole man. Total healing or wholeness for every department of man's life. Now all these three departments of the life of man, they are subject to satanic attacks. And they are interrelated, they are interdependent. One is affected by the other. So they affect themselves. This is the mystery of total healing. The spirit can be sick. The spirit can be defiled. The spirit can be caged. The spirit can be demoted. The spirit can be bruised. The spirit can be wounded. The spirit can be blinded. The spirit can be tied down. Tied down. When you see people tied down by the powers of darkness and they are still living, they are breathing, they are walking about this, it's the spirit man that has been tied down. The soul too, which is responsible for our emotion, can be bruised can be wounded, can be made sick, can be beaten, can be caged, can be yoked to evil. The body too can suffer, can be demoted, can be rendered weak, can be wounded, can be armed. So all these three parts, the devil targets all three to make sure that man does not receive his total healing. Complete diagnosis for the total man. Man therefore has three basic problems. And these are the basic areas where the devil attacks people. The first one is sin. Sin is the bane of humanity. Sin is the foundation of all tragedies. Sin is a wicked prison warder. Sin keeps its victim in prison. Sin can be likened to a fisherman's dragnet. Once you are caught in it and you don't jump out, you are caged. Sin is a whip which the devil uses to unleash eternal wounds of people. Sin can blind, it can maim, it can deafen, it can paralyze, it can poison, it can kill. A sinner is therefore a dangerous person. So a believer who is living in sin is just a tragedy waiting to happen. Those who are caught in the web of sins are captives. And to give in to sin is to swallow poison. Our outline says sin is more dangerous than acid. Even the smallest dose kills. Sin is more deadly than cancer. Sin rubbishes destiny. It swallows glory. It enslaves the soul. It captures the mind. And deadens the conscience. Sin is the most destructive weapon in satanic arsenal. It has destroyed more people than nuclear weapons. It is more than deadly sicknesses. Therefore, it's important to shun iniquity and embrace, embrace absolute holiness within and without. Once you are able to deal with the issue of sin, 90% of satanic attack against you collapses. Because for Satan to come against you, the prince of the world must have a ladder in you to climb in. If there is anything where the church of God today is powerless, it's because there is so much sin in the camp. There are so many Christians who are married and glued to cleverly conceal sin. And such believers, they reduce the anointing, they reduce the operation of the power of God, they reduce answers to prayers. Every sinner is grouping together with Satan to fight God. It is because of the issue of sin, even the whole of the Bible was written. If there was no sin, there would have been no necessity for this Bible. Sin came into the world, and through sin, other dangers came in. And then God began to raise the plan of salvation. That plan of salvation. And the story of those who played with sin and were destroyed. And those things that were written for our learning. That's why the Bible is there. 
And so any pastor you see who does not warn people about the danger of sin is a dangerous minister indeed. Unfortunately, there are so many pastors now who don't talk about sin anymore. And therefore, people are wallowing in sin and the enemy is just having a field day. Anyone who wants to make heaven at all will have to deal with the issue of sin. The Bible says, for this cause was the Son of God manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. For him to destroy the works of the devil in your life, the issue of sin must be sorted out. When people live in their sin and they are crying to God, it's like rebels crying to God. The Bible says, he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. The Bible says, he that covereth his sin. He didn't say, he didn't say may not prosper. He said, shall not prosper. But if you confess them and you repent from them, you will have mercy. I pray that anyone here who is caged by iniquity shall be set free by fire in the name of Jesus. Then there is sickness. There is a direct link between sickness and sin. Sin is a magnet. It attracts sickness. Jesus told the man by the pool of Bethesda after 38 years by that pool. It's amazing that sin kept the man for 38 years by the pool until Jesus came along and said sin no more lest a worse thing come unto you. Sin detained him in the valley of evil. And once a person gets born again, and you repent from your sin, if you go back to that old sin, old problems will come back. The Bible says, if I build again what the Lord has destroyed, say, I have made myself a transgressor. What God has destroyed in your life, go back to it again, say, you become a transgressor. The third thing is satanic bondage. The area of satanic bondage is a very serious matter. Demons and satanic agents, they are possessed, oppressed, and harass people. There are many reasons why God set up mountain of fire. One of them is for the revival of apostolic signs and wonders. One of them is to set people free from captivity. One of them is to develop prayer eagles. One of them is to proclaim liberty to those who are in captivity. Oh. One of them is to deliver men and men and women from satanic prophets and satanic pastors. Those are some of the reasons why God established the mountain of fire miracles ministry. There used to be a Jesus of Oyubo in this Lagos. There used to be another Jesus of Agege. They confused and led astray so many people until they disappeared. But they left a trail of trouble behind. The children of those men, Jesus of Agege, Jesus of Oyubo, they come to mountain of fire. And I know what they went through before they could be delivered. A lot of people have suffered terribly from the hands of satanic prophets and things like that. Held in bondage. Some are held down by the terrible powers of their house. These are, the res- that's, these are what happens to the total man. To make sure that he's not total. The fall of man in the garden is a terrible tragedy. The fullness of what happened to Adam, many of us don't understand it. What Adam really lost in that garden is not clear to many of us. While Adam was in that garden, he was like a superman, highly intelligent. The Bible says he gave all those animals their names. He moved about in, with the animals. He played with crocodiles. He played with serpents. He played with lions. He played with all these anim- animals. They couldn't touch him. They couldn't kill him because he was a divine creature. And God used to come to him at the cool of the day. He was never sick one day. But the day that he fell, all those benefits were thrown away. They pushed him out of that garden. Put an angel with the sword of fire to prevent him from coming back. And then Satan began to laugh. I'm praying for anyone here. Anything in your life that is causing laughter for Satan, the Lord shall resolve it tonight. In the name of Jesus. A seven fold devil. It was in that garden that the spirit man died. The spirit man of everybody died. The Bible says, since 
from Adam. All died. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. The fall of Adam killed the spirit of man. So being born again is when that your spirit that died during the time of Adam comes alive again. Look at the result of the fall in this outline. So that fall separated man from God. When Adam was in the garden, he did not need to pray. He did not need to work. It was after the fall, working day by nine to five, working in the office, working in the bank, started. It's after the fall, mosquitoes began to bite people. It's after the fall, lions begin to kill human beings. Because man lost his glory totally. It disrupted man's inner harmony. It affected man's relation with fellow human beings. It opens down to sicknesses. It invited demonic bondage and oppression. The devil has no legal right to torment man before. It was in that garden, everything was lost. It became a foundation for spiritual derailment, a destiny derailment. And it became the legal route for foundational bondage. This is why the minister of total ministry to the total man starts. Many of us understand when we say somebody is sick, maybe he's having a headache, sudden fever, the leg is pain in the person, we say he's sick. But the spiritual sickness, sometimes it's not clear. When a person cannot connect to heaven, you want to worship God, the worship does not flow. No vision, no dreams, no prophecy, no revelation, no information from heaven. Everything is blank about you. Your spirit man is sick. He's sick from what you call spiritual blockage. They have blocked you. It's a sickness. When people are saying, God told me, God told me, God told me. God told you. How? How did you hear it? They don't understand. Simple things like pray. Know the kind of job you should do. Pray. Know the kind of husband you should marry. Pray. Know the kind of wife you should marry. Some people say, I have prayed. I did not receive anything. Sometimes we we'll gather people to meetings. I will begin to pray. Everybody begin to pray. Come on Lord and fill me now. Lord, I want to see your face. I want to go the grave of the glory. Come, oh God, and fill me. Come, oh God, and fill me. Come, oh God, and fill me. After singing for about five minutes, some people will begin to receive the touch of heaven. Others just stand there like wood. Nothing happens to them. No touch, no vision, no speaking in tongues. They just come in blank like that. The spirit man is sick. That's what we call spiritual blockage. It is part of this that people will say, well, I don't dream. It's a lie. You dream. But before you wake up, they've rubbed it off. It's a spiritual sickness. Some people, they have no desire to pursue any form of spiritual discipline. Some people now, if you want to scare them seriously, tell them to fast for three days non-stop, they'll be so scared no desire for any spiritual discipline that is a total inability to read the bible when they carry the bible they sleep off but they can read magazines they can read newspapers they can go to what they call facebook and stay on that facebook for hours they can stay there and do other things but immediately is the word of god they sleep off such people when they start when they say okay i too want to try i want to do some spiritual activities maybe they carry the bible they start carrying the bible they start praying they instantly fall asleep some all manner of terrible thoughts which makes it impossible for them to focus begin to cross their mind like this shokoto london yaba this going and flashing 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 across their mind they may even begin to fall sick immediately and they develop terrible headache Anytime such people decide to grow up spiritually as a terrible counter attack that sends them down again, it's an attack on the spirit man. If there is any such person here tonight, the power of God, which has no respect for bondage, shall set you free by fire. That amen is too weak. There are some people, they have what to call dry unbelief. They doubt even God. 
prayer we are praying self. I pray we are praying self. Have you seen the God before you? So I beg. They doubt salvation. They doubt their own relationship with God. Any small thing, they are in despair, they are discouraged. Any small thing, they start coming to church. They don't see them in isolation. They just draw back. When their breakthrough is close, is then they start displaying unbelief. They fail to believe God for their breakthroughs. The spirit man is very, very sick. Very sick. This is part of what we call our Monday service. Spiritual hospital. Spiritual hospital. The name of this Monday meeting. Spiritual hospital. Not physical hospital. Well, I have a dick, I have this, I have that. It's not that kind of thing. Spiritual hospital. And in any hospital, a good one, the first thing you need is a good diagnosis. What is causing the problem? When you investigate, then they give you drugs. Many years ago in this country, there was plenty of complaint. There are no doctors. Doctors are few. Doctors are few. Every morning, all general hospital will be filled with patients. Doctors cannot cover them. Then government that time, they brought in some foreign doctors to help. I think the ones they brought to general hospital Lagos, maybe they were Chinese. So when these doctors arrived, they didn't understand English too much. They didn't understand Yoruba. They came. The first thing they did, which impressed everybody, was that instead of these doctors hiding in their room, and patients are going to the room, they carried their table and chair. They came and sat outside. People now could like this. So when you are talking, they are looking at your face. As you are talking, they are writing. By the time you finish talking, give you paper. Next. Look at you like this. As you look where you are pointing your hand. Next. Within one hour, these two men cleared the whole crowd. Nobody to see again. People were now in pharmacy department and they began to read newspapers. But then, the one that has headache, they gave him medicine for stomach trouble. The one that has leg geek, they gave him malaria medicine. Because they really did not understand what you are saying. Just using sense to calculate. That is physical hospital. Terrible diagnosis like that will be suicidal in spiritual hospital. I am praying for somebody here today. Every arrow fired against your spirit man shall backfire by fire. 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 A seven fold man. There are some people. There is this condition of all is well. No matter what I do. Say, ah, this thing you are doing is no good. Though. I beg. Uh, leave me alone. It's all right. They are smoking too much of this cigarette. They are drinking too much of this wine. No, no, be something to kill somebody. There's this carefree attitude. They believe that God does not care. Therefore, whatever they do wrong does not matter much. There is this internal twisting of the truth in them. It's a terrible spiritual sickness. There are some people, they have what you call abnormal thoughts. Abnormal thoughts will consume their mind. Strange thoughts about sex. Strange thoughts about blasphemy. Strange thoughts about cruelty. Thoughts about rape. Of suicide. Of killing themselves. Of evil thoughts. The mind is jammed with terrible, terrible, terrible evil thoughts. Tormenting thoughts. Persistent and consistent bombardment of weird and strange thoughts. That if, you, if God can open their mind and you will see it, you will carry your bag and run. Some have unwelcome thoughts that torment them for hours. For hours. You will be tormenting them, you will be tormenting them, tormenting them. It's a terrible spiritual sickness. And it will be a terrible tragedy if you cover up. There are some, their life is so easily penetrable by wicked powers. If everybody was sitting in the house and witches coming at night, it is to them they will first of all go. If they want to employ house help, if they bring plenty of house help, as an employer, he will point to the witch there. And say, I like this one. I like this one. He will be the one who will employ a house help at home. That one will be using satanic magnet to drag her husband at night. But she's the one that brought the person home. It's a spiritual sickness. Some, 
their emotions are at the extreme somebody has wounded them seriously or offended them in the past they cannot forgive there is a wound in their heart that is bleeding and that's what the devil wants that bleeding heart it will keep sending demons there some that wound in the heart the devil will now use demons to provoke it into anger and uncontrollable rage somebody placed a phone call to me the other time in the night a very big man say Gio, Gio, are you there say, my wife my wife my wife has broken the windscreen of all the seven cars in the compound please let me give you the phone to talk to her to talk to her she's very hungry she's in a rage I said, okay, give her the give her phone. Say, say, Joe, Joe, on the line. Why are you breaking windscreen? So I saw one girl inside one of our cars. I said, I want to destroy the cars. Something is wrong. Some, some people they are so worried, and anxious. The anxiety now turns to aggression. It turns to aggression. That's why it's good to pray very well. That God, the God whom you serve, should go out of His way and do what he can do to make you live comfortably to make you live in your own house to make you escape from face my face your face my fight you because in those kind of accommodations an array of strange human beings are distributed and they pollute people's lives a lot of spirits float around at night when a person is spiritually sick already you have emotional and spiritual problems and you are living in those kind of places there they can turn your fear into terror there satan will use your emotion to imprison you in your own grave clothes i want to pray for somebody there who believes god that in a way that Herod does not understand in a way that Goliath does not understand in a way that is not even clear to your enemies in a way that is not clear to your friends the lord shall provide for you in the name of Jesus, a savu for the man. You remember the testimony of that brother? He was living with his uncle and sleeping on a mat by on the floor. And there was a messenger in one office. He said, God does not recognize jokes. So he came to a meeting like this. And the man of God just said, there is somebody here the lord is going to give you a house and you won't pay anything the amen was low but the amen of the brother there was loud although he was sleeping on the floor and he got to the office next day and the, um, the managing director was passing by so when he saw him the boy prostrated i said i am the happy new year sir happy new year sir i said hello happy new year the man walked past only for him to turn back again I said, come, come, come. I gave everybody in this company a Christmas present. Did I give you anything? I said, no, sir. It's okay. Come to my office. Follow the man to the office. The man looked into his drawer. He brought out a bunch of key. So you see, that is a low-cost house I bought many years ago. But it's been there. I don't really need it. Do you want a house? I said, yes, sir. I gave the boy the key. Messenger. The boy could not wait for them to close. When they gave him the key, he thought it was just a flat in a block of flats. By the time he got there, he found that it was a bungalow standing alone. His hands were shaking as he tried the keys on the door. The door opened. He was shocked. Then he remembered the word of knowledge. When he got home, to his uncle, where they are living in one room, and he was sleeping on the floor, he said, I have a house. It's a house. Which day did you come from the village? We have been here for many years. He said, this is the key. It took time for the uncle to believe. The God that did that one shall answer you by fire. <laughs> that amen is not strong enough. The story has not ended. The boy got to work next day to go and thank the man. Prostrated. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Say, it's okay, it's okay. I hope you like the place. Say, yes, sir. As he stood up to go again, I said, Are there furniture in the house? Say, No, sir, it's empty. It's okay. Every year I change my furniture. The ones we changed last year, come and take them away from our garage. Now, sir, he got a house, he got furniture without spending one cup. That God shall answer you by fire. 
Masikapola Kantia. We shall answer you by fire. There are some. They don't have any will to be strong on anything. No principle. If they say, uh, begin to walk naked, is that what they are doing now? They say, yes. I will do it. No will. And they say, excuse me, madam. Excuse me, sister. Excuse me, this. I like you. No resistance. No, 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 no. They don't have it in the dictionary at all. The spirit is sick. Some people's will have been polluted. So polluted, they cannot control their lusts. And so you have plenty of them in pornography, masturbation, fornication, adultery. Because they can't control that lust. A lot of people will be surprised when they get to heaven. And you arrive at the gate of heaven. They will say, straight out. Put him in hellfire. He's a rapist. Say, ah, so much, sir. I've never raped anybody. Why are you calling me a rapist? Then they will open the book of Matthew and say, Have you not read it? That once you lost after a woman in your heart, you have already committed this. Meaning that a man can sit down in his chair and be raping people there seriously because in his heart he has done it. Some people are like that. Some are addicted to alcohol, drugs, nicotine, lying. Stealing, gossiping is a sign of a sick spirit. It's good for me to break this thing down to the level you will understand. <laughs> because if I just use big English and say spiritual sickness, spiritual infirmity, you may not understand. But if I say headache, you understand. Malaria fever, that one is clear. Tuberculosis is clear. Insanity is clear. Those are physical sicknesses. But the spiritual one is much more serious. Some people, something drains them of their energy. They are almost always tired. They suffer from burnout. Unexplainable tiredness. Terrible tiredness. They wake up within five minutes, they are tired. They carry out medical check. There's nothing wrong with them. They are spiritually sick. There are some people. Demons have been able to enter into their spirit. And has induced eating disorder. They are unable to control eating. They just eat and eat and eat. Whereas the rule is this. Immediately you are satisfied. You should stand up. You should not wait until your tummy begins to expand and expand and expand and almost bursting. You say, now nah, I'm alright. Some who eat what will destroy them. They cannot stop. Some know that sugar is bad for their body. But they will eat and eat and eat everything that is sugar. Some have studied there is something running in this family. And what the food that causes it, you'll be eating it. That is eating disorder. And it's, it's something that you must really look seriously into. Some can eat anything, anywhere, anytime. I thank God that at least I, I don't see them again now. Sometimes ago, or maybe, maybe we'll have entered into this place before they start. Oh, you're coming to church here. Yeah. See some people in the morning. Before 7 a.m., you are buying buns. Buff, puff. Dry fish, fried yam, apple. There's one man that brings one bicycle here with plastafarian here. And you want to go and pray. But because I say demon crying inside your tummy, you queue up to buy food and wrap it up, waiting to eat it after the service. All the prayer they are praying. Your mind is on your roasted yam that is inside your light on bag. Spiritual sickness. Some they are unable to pray loud prayers. There are even some people. If they call the name of Jesus too loud, they get into trouble. I've seen such people before. Some people can pick up the Bible and they can't memorize anything there. But they know all the adverts. They know the name of all the footballers. All of them together, they know it. All these are deep, deep spiritual infirmity. There are some people, they are all style against anything holy. They don't like it at all. If they buy food, say pray on that food, they don't want to pray. They get aggressive when things that are holy are mentioned. All these are spiritual infirmity. There are some. They completely rebel against anything that has to do with truth. Just lie, lie, lie. They believe in. Then one terrible spiritual infirmity is what we call out of body experiences. You go out of your body. But you may not even know that you are traveling. 
your spirit leaves your body and goes around at night just roaming around like a vagabond all through the night as soon as your spirit goes out and roaming around going to this village that village going all over the place that moment that your spirit leaves the body terrible spirit invade that body and then the body now comes back then you wake up you feel heavy you feel as if you have been working hard in somebody's farm you feel as if you have worked so hard it's a serious spiritual sickness when your spirit man is so loose and occulty people can gather themselves I say okay okay we are going to call his name three times and call his spirit man to come out here and they begin to call and your spirit goes out to answer that call the spirit man is weak and sick weak and sick that's why some people they wake up they go to the toilet they come back to the bed where their evil dream stopped it continues again they go to the toilet again come back and sleep the thing resumes from where they stopped it means that your spirit man travels to some specific locations then there will be terrible satanic dreams and visions this person is just going all over the place all over the place while i was in this university of lagos whenever exam was coming all of us who carry our book you see very serious look on the faces some people will put their leg in cold water some people will be drinking coffee some people will be drinking this tablet they call a labu just to remain awake some will be eating cola nuts to remain awake we had a boy in our class who would just be smiling and say <laughs> you guys are you yeah, are wasting your time he said it is better to be reading those books under the water under the water say yes that's why it's good to be reading the book we did not know that he was reading occultic books that brings his spirit out we are be doing things strange until our final exam i think that day when he went out of the body some wicked spirits came and blocked him from re-entering his body a battle started the time he was supposed to enter went past by the time he was able to force himself back in he ran mad he didn't take the final exam with us a sick spirit man will always put the physical man in trouble there are some when they look in the mirror what they see is different from what you and i will see about them they see themselves as the most handsome men the most beautiful women on this planet they begin to have false confidence false things about their lives and they believe the wrong things about themselves and go and make terrible mistakes tonight we are here so you can understand these things that's why it's not good not to be attending monday special hospital there are many things a person will miss back to this handout it's a total ministry to the total man salvation from sin healing of disease or sicknesses and deliverance from bondage were prominent features of jesus earthly ministry jesus ministered to the total needs of man salvation of the soul healing of the body and deliverance from bondage and oppression were entrenched in his ministry hence his commission to the church centers on threefold ministry so preach the gospel heal the sick cast out demons preach the gospel heal the sick cast out demons preach the gospel stands for salvation heal the sick stands for healing cast out demons stands for deliverance so what is the divine prescription for the total man the first one is repentance run about tongue repentance the second one is restitution if you have taken anything from anybody send it back three weeks ago i just found a big envelope amongst my letters it contains three books and the person wrote a note dear dr lukoya you gave me this book in 1991 for me to read them so i read them i refused to return i'm sorry i'm now returning them as a form of restitution 1991 i had forgotten who the person was but i knew they were my books that is what to call restitution restitution if you have stolen you return what you have stolen repentance alone is not good enough in many cases a restitution may be necessary what you have taken you return it if you don't return it there's trouble i know a brother many years back he came to one of our meetings and he surrendered his life to jesus he had a message of restitution he was touched he now came to me and said sir i want to go to my village and see my uncle 
So I was working with my uncle before, and I stole plenty of his money when I was working there. In fact, if I want to calculate it now, I have stolen it up to 120,000 naira. 120,000 naira. This was days when naira was still naira. When naira and the pound, British pound, was almost the same. That's when he stole his money. So it now came to me. So okay, you want to go and make restitution? I said, yes, sir. How much of that money do you have now that you want to return? He said, I don't have anything. So I just want to go to my uncle and tell him I'm sorry and I'm sure he will forgive me. I said, ah, it's good to go with something. If you give it to him, if he said he does not want, said, that's good. I said, no, I will go, sir. So what I will do, that when I get to our village, I will buy bread at the car park and give it to my uncle. I said, okay. Since I said, don't go with that one, he said he was going. So he went and he saw the uncle. That one received him very well. And as he was telling the story and how he stole the man's money, the man was shaking his head. I said, that's very good. So you have changed now. That's very good. That's very good. So when he has finished, the man said, okay, no problem. Where is the money? He said, I don't have the money, but I brought this bread. Gave the bread to the man. The man collected the bread and smashed it on his head. And he continued to beat him with the lion of the bread until he ran to the car park. Restitution must cost you something. Three, salvation. This is a divine procedure of total salvation. You must be totally saved. Four is obedience. You have to obey God 100%. 99% is not good enough. Total repentance. Five is holiness. Holiness within and without. Six is deliverance. And seven is baptism of fire. You need to experience brokenness on your way to holiness. There is no holiness without brokenness. God must first break you before he can heal you. He has to expose your true spiritual state before he can point you and make you whole. The flesh or the carnal mind will try to stand in the way of God and hinder him from having his own way. I pray that the Lord will give you total healing today in the name of Jesus. In conclusion, God has provided a solution for the total needs of man. The word salvation is an inclusive term for all the blessings. Deliverance and provisions of God that have been obtained for us through the death of Jesus Christ. It includes spiritual, physical, financial, temporal and eternal salvation. God wants us to enter into the fullness of his blessing for the spirit, soul and body. You have to pray aggressively. If you want to experience a sal salvation, healing, prosperity and deliverance in your spirit, soul and body. Meaning that if you want to win the war, the enemy is waging against your holiness. You first of all need to realize that there is a problem. Then you now need to declare war. It's war. It's not a gentleman's prayer. It's war. Once the spirit man is healed and the spirit man is cleansed, the wound in the spirit man is healed, then all that things will just come easily. 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 But if there is still a festering wound inside the spirit, then the person will still be in serious trouble. Once the body is sick, there will be no peace. If the soul is sick, there will be no peace. If the spirit is sick, there will be no peace. But the Bible says, Beloved, I wish that thou prospered in health. Even as your spirit prospered, God wants the totality of our life to prosper. Body, soul, and spirit. And one secret you must know, that whatsoever has been concluded in the spirit realm, it is what manifests physically. It is the spirit that decides what happened in the physical. Therefore, if you make a change in the spirit realm, the change will happen physically. If you gain power in the spirit realm, the power will manifest physically. But if you are weak in the spirit realm, the weakness will manifest in this physical realm tonight. As many people as really want total healing, they are the ones who should pray the kind of prayers you want to pray now. They are the ones who should sing the kind of song you want to sing now. They are the kind who should not pamper their body, their soul, and their spirit. There is something known as Holy Ghost fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost, just like the fire of Elijah, can burn away all rubbish inside the spirit. It is not a fire you can see with your eyes. But when it enters into you, it's purifying power. It enters into your soul and sets you free. Rise up on your feet now. Rise up on your feet now. If you see anyone, please just keep him quiet. It is part of the sickness we are talking about. But when you understand the gravity of the matter, your body must know you are praying. Your spirit must know you are praying. Your head must know you are praying. 
The title of your being must know that you are praying. In fact, when prayer gets to a level, you may not even know where you are again. Because your spirit man has connected to the wavelet of heaven. All eyes closed. With a voice as loud as thunder. The voice which should be as loud as thunder. Don't let anybody's voice be louder than yours at this prayer. I want you to understand what you have been saying here tonight. Open your eyes and look at me. There was a time we had to pray for somebody. And the Lord said a strange thing. He said, son, this woman has been tied down in the spirit realm. And there, they are feeding her with grass. And the woman they are talking about, she's pregnant, but she can't eat anything. I didn't see you put in her mouth. In the shades, vomit. Anything. Water. Anything. Yet, she was not getting lean. But she herself knew something was wrong. She has been taken out, tied at witchcraft coven, fed with grass. Many people, they take them out, they tie them down in coven. Today is rice, tomorrow is okra. That's how they will be eating. Feeding them, they tie them down. Even food that they don't normally eat physically. Because the spirit man is weak, tied him down and giving it to him. Some people, when they now attack them in the dream, they can't even say, Don't say the Lord. Don't say the Lord. I am a child of God. You can't do this until the enemy has finished. And then they wake up and start drinking anointing oil instead of dealing with the enemy right then. The enemy has on his plantation, it's gone. They are now taking medicine to deal with it instead of to fight it out there. Can you close your eyes and shout this loud and clear? Blood of Jesus! Set my spirit free! In the name of Jesus! 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 This is not a day to negotiate. But Katesa Tendika. This is not a day to negotiate. This is a day to strike out. Blood of Jesus. Set my spirit free. Set me free. Set me free. Set me free. Set me free. Jesus. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, until I stop you, is there you stop saying what I want you to say now? Say, my spirit man, receive fire. 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 Continue. Jesus. Something is happening over there. Bakapota setenda, balakatenda ribo sopa, da kate kitalila. Now with a loud voice, you have to sing these fire songs. Holy Ghost and fire be my spirit. Holy Ghost and fire. 
Holy Ghost and fire. Yes. Holy Ghost and fire. Yes. Holy Ghost and fire. Yes. Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. Something is happening here, right? Oh, yes, Holy Ghost on fire. Receive the fire, receive the fire, receive the fire, Jesus, Jesus. Say, blood of Jesus, make me whole in the name of Jesus.
Jesus name we pray. Let us share the grace in fellowship.